welcome everybody to for planetary governance uh, our our symposium of interim projects within the terraforming program uh, let, let me introduce then a little bit of, of about the program uh, itself uh, and for those of you who are joining us from Purdue Institute I'll, I'll give a little bit of introduction to Strelka those of you who are joining us from the Strelka network a bit of in introduction to uh, to Bergruen as well. Let me share my screen and we will get started. Okay, so um, for planetary governance, we are, are what we'll have for you today is a series of talks uh, and presentations of eight uh, new design research projects by the researchers of the terraforming terraforming program that they we've been developing really over a matter of uh, last last couple of weeks or so. Um, the interim projects uh, sort of come uh, halfway in the middle of our five month program. Uh, at the end of the five month program, we'll also have a, a a big public showcase of the final research projects, and that'll be the end of July. We just introduce you, uh, invite you to join us for those as well. So um, for those of you not familiar who are joining us for perhaps from the Bergruen Network, the, the Strelk Institute is a, now about 11 years old, um, as Olga mentioned, uh, it's a nonprofit institute uh, looking at issues around architecture, urbanism, media, and design, and has really become um, and, and, and is a, a hub uh, for uh, really the most interesting discourse around these topics uh, within Russia. Uh, we're joined this this year for the as a co-sponsor for this uh, uh, for this symposium by the Bergruen, Bergruen Institute, also about 11 years old. Um, and as, as Olga had mentioned, is, is a, uh, uh, based in Los Angeles and is focusing on issues of, sort of big ideas around uh, the future of government, uh, technology, culture, uh, uh, economics. Uh, and we're very uh, pleased and excited to be uh, working with them uh, uh, for this, because a lot of the work that they've been doing, a lot of the work that we've been doing, um, have a really interesting overlap in some of the perspectives. There's obviously coming in to some extent from different starting points, but we're um, very interested in about seeing where the exchanges might happen. Let me then quickly introduce the terraforming. Um, as, as mentioned, this is the the theme the we're in the second year um, of our cycle for this uh, this research this research program. Uh, the term terraforming doesn't refer necessarily to the terraforming of Mars or the moon or something like that, but rather um, it is, as we say, the comprehensive project to fundamentally transform Earth's cities and technologies and ecosystems to ensure that the planet will be capable of supporting Earth-like life uh, now and in the future. And for these, perhaps somewhat counterintuitively, uh, artificiality, automation, and astronomy uh, form the basis of our the vision for uh, an, another viable planetarity. I think you'll see this in the work in the work today. There's also a book that I wrote, which is if you go to the links that has been provided in the the Google Doc links provided in, in the chat, with lots of excellent uh, 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 excellent things for you to to check out and download, both from Stroke and from McGruin. You can download a free copy of the book, which lays out in about thirty thousand words, sort of uh, deeper uh, sort of thematic manifesto for uh, what this is all about and, and, and what our perspective on it is. The program uh, has a number of faculty from a number of disciplines, architecture, urbanism, filmmaking, philosophy, uh, uh, all, all really uh, the, the whole gamut. Um, these are some of the people that we've been working with in the program of the this year, uh, this year and last year, um, and uh, some of which have been joining us, joining us today. Um, it is the second program that I've had the opportunity to direct at Strelko. The first one was called The New Normal, which concluded after a three-year cycle. We also recently just published, with, in collaboration with Park Books, uh, a compendium of the work that had come out of that program, some 20-some projects and a number of essays by the faculty that were uh, involved with this, and that's now available at fine bookmongers near you. The... the, the, the event for today um, is, as mentioned, around this theme of planetary governance. To, to a certain degree, um, it's a, an elaboration of an essay that I published with Strelka Mag um, a few months ago, which is also in the link, um, uh, somewhat cheekily, provocatively titled, in quotes, New World Order for a planetary governance. And if you're interested in getting some, a little bit more background on the approach, please, you can refer to that. We also have, uh, in conjunction with this with Strelka Mag, we also held an open call 
uh, for papers and projects on this theme, uh, and we'll be uh, publishing some of the, those uh, in the coming weeks. So then with the preamble out of the way, let me then spend a couple minutes introducing the theme and setting a little bit of a, of a discursive frame for us. The, the question of planetary governance as we see it sort of first revolves around the question of what we would constitute of the planetary itself. What is the relationship between the planetary and planetary governance? Or another way of asking, what is the position of intelligence from which such an intervention might take place? And indeed, how could that position understand the situation of its own agency? With these are some of the first principal questions we would want to pose. For us, I think the relation passes through, we could say it passes through both the agency of that intelligence and also the intelligence of agency. Before that, as a, it, it must safeguard and give birth to multiple forms of differentiation and order, not desertification and chaos. So what does that entail? Well, it means not simply the application of management uh, as the already known, but the cultivation of competencies that reflect the complexity of the project. It's not just an exercise in politics now at a larger scale, but rather the reinvention of uh, enforceable self-organization. It's not just the deployment of technology at hand in the same old way, but rather the conjuring of geotechnologies that can engage the needed compositional aspirations. It's not just the invocation of extant social cosmologies, but the will emergence of others based on the scientific cosmology of this century and the next. There is no time to waste. The pandemic was a crisis of governance. It laid bare the signs of things to come. The international system could not respond to the planetary crisis because it was not built to do so. It is an architecture of and for another era. For the same reason, the failure to properly address climate change, the political economy of automation, the human right to spatial access, and so many other questions of our, our shared future are also at stake. These are slow wave conditions that cannot solve themselves through spontaneity. They must be met with new modes of planning, mobilization, and structures. Um, once not available in the current, uh, by the current international order. Now, for that, we, we need to conceive and construct a different kind of culture, a different kind of logic and culture of governance. Societies must have the ability to not only produce and consume mindlessly, but to deliberately compose themselves. Planless emergence may be the background force of evolution, but deliberation and deliberateness have themselves emerged uh, a, a, a through that very same process and must be re-embraced as the basis of collective agency. This is a matter of scale as well as leverage. If societies are able to sense themselves, model themselves and act back upon themselves, then this also means recognizing society is planetary and has been so long before modernity. If we're going to construct a 22nd century worth living through, our capacity for self-composition must be the subject of our most intense imagination and reason. Now, within that, are some of the hypotheses that we are working with are, are as follows. One is that the necessary and fundamental shifts in geotechnology are, are likely to precede necessary and fundamental shifts uh, in, 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 in geopolitics. Um, via viable planetary governance would not only radically expand the range of techniques available, but also, and this is the key point, alter the very notion of geopolitics in the image of the terraforming project that it ensues. That the geopolitics, the, the, the geopolitical structures that we may be seeking are ones that emerge through the process of learning how to govern the geotechnologies that are necessary to directly, uh, directly and materially affect planetary geochemistry inclusive of our, of, of our own societies. To govern a geotechnology capable of making the difference may require the emergence of a new sort of geopolitics that would never have been appeared, never would have appeared otherwise. Now for us also, this means linking, not delinking. For that we take that planetary as a given, not as a, not as a, a scale. Uh, the, question should, the question is not, should humanity be planetary? It, it always is intrinsically, but how so? 
Now, for some, the scope of the challenge is so daunting that the response uh, is to attempt to delink and to scale down to a more comfortable uh, to a more comfortable scale, an artificially small locality where one's agency is more clearly seen and felt. And now, while this can be an important tactic, uh, it is not finally a viable strategy. The mismatch between reality and model is too great. Still, we presume at, for this that we presume that people uh, that people and things and ideas are constantly in motion, not stuck in place. We ex we presume motion, not stasis. It is not a revanchist return to the illusion of a nativist fetish of origins, but a means for new assemblages of cultures and languages and genomes and economies. <clears throat> if the pandemic was a wake-up call that the international anarchy can no longer hold, then the question is what forms can fill and must fill this void? Which way to guarantee preservation, to equitably distribute the populations of people on the surfaces of, un of, the, of the planet, of, un of using planetary scale computation for something actually useful? How is it that these might be seen, the, both these and more, seen not just in historical terms, but even in astronomic terms as well? These are the questions that should define what it is we mean by new, what we mean by world, and what it is we mean by order. For that, we need to conceive, again, a different uh, culture of governance. We have to have the ability to compose ourselves. We're going to construct the basis of the, of, of the future worth living through. This capacity for self-composition must be at the forefront, which is not just internationalism. The late 19th and 20th century were full of ideas for world governments, some of which we look upon as hopelessly naive, some of which contain essentially good ideas that both did and did not pan out. Planetary governance must be seen not just in, as an extension of internationalism, but in, indeed in contrast to it. Internationalism, such as the United Nations, is, it, it, by this I mean this kind of federalism, which presumes, presumes the sanctity of an isomorphic nation state. It understands the world as primarily the circumscription of plots of terrestrial land. In many ways, it is fundamentally ethnocentric, fundamentally traditionalist, and, and as such, its form represents a misalignment of governor and governed. Planetary governance must meet and align with new scales and tempos and structures of the conditions with which it is asked to operate. Not all of which are defined by human populations and their voice and will. If the problems are planetary, then trying to cohere them around the game theory dynamics of locally embedded sovereign zones called countries may disable the paths that should be open. <clears throat> now, None of this is to suggest necessarily that the state as such evolves, the state as such dissolves, rather that it evolves. It comes to do something else and take a different form. Instead of disappearing, it may expand uh, from circumscribed territory to a more hemispherical scope. And as something constructed in the image and provision and platform, uh, in the something constructed in the image of provision and platform more than in the image of flag and fatherland. Fortunately or unfortunately, the default markers of the international order, individuation of populations, humanist popular voice, legal division of public and private institutions, federalism, rights regimes, and even the sovereignty of legislation may slip or slide in new guises and purposes. This shift has everything to do with what we might call the, the, end, the, the end of the post-Cold War era and its characteristic ideologies and commitments. In the West, this included the elevation of quote, the political as an ideal, but came with a corresponding denigration of governance. Whereas in Asia, perhaps the inverse was more true. But in fact, the, all of this gave way to new, to, to huge platforms, corporations, and technocracies that are based already on deliberate top-down structured long-term planning and are successful for it. On the left, the deconstruction of governmentality was honed into increasingly fine filters. 
For others, the valorization of sovereign individuals or vitalist life that must never be captured by governing apparatuses became an article of faith. But if power is nowhere or everywhere, where does governance reside? Is it disqualified? And if so, is it any wonder that societal self-composition is now so difficult? Instead, is this where infrastructure and governance converge by provision and by mobilization? Lastly, um, for the near and long-term future uh, of, of planetary governance, the role of planetary scale computation is also likely paramount. As I've written, the, the, we need to see planetary scale computation as composed of interlocking modular layers, each of which can be replaced and displaced in different cycles and functions. For governance, the function of planetary scale computation is not just a calculation, uh, the calculation of means or ends, but in its capacity to sense, to make sense, to model, and recursively act back upon the planet from which it, is, from, from which it emerges and in which it is situated. Put differently, planetary scale computation is a way of making artificial space and artificial time that supports its cha or challenges existing organizations, both. That is, while it distorts and deforms po traditional political geographies, it also produces new space in its own image. And because it does this, geopolitical competition over planetary scale computation, now, now predominantly between the US and China, is a competition not just to claim and occupy that artificial space, but indeed to define what it is in the first place the map precedes the territory in this regard. This is qualitatively different than competition over land, which may have driven earlier geopolitics for which the line on the map might be contested, but the ground itself is a given. For planetary scale computation, the map is contested, but the territory is absolutely not a given. In fact, as I said, the territory may be produced by the contestation of the map more than the map is produced by the territory. Finally, planetary scale competition is planetary scale computation is both something that demands governance and something through which governance knows and acts. Let us remind ourselves that the very notion of climate change comes from the sensing, modeling, and calculation of measurable change in the planet in ways that went well beyond direct human reckoning. The simulation of the past and the present and the future comes becomes collective intelligence becomes both a voice and a tool for governing interventions based on its implications. So if advertising is the negative example of what planetary scale computation is for, earth sciences might, might be the positive model. And for this, the notion of control is then more of an aspiration than an accusation because the real accomplishments of the collective model are epistemological. They are the real, the real accomplishments of the collective model are epistemological. They disclose a reality that precedes and exceeds us. That is the, the biochemistry of the planet. They allow us, they allow for a recursive knowing, which allows for a collective self-knowledge and the possibility of self-composition. Ultimately, this is what planetary governance means. To refuse or to suppress this is to embrace ignorance as a false innocence. It's to abdicate human species' own sapience, reason, cunning, and responsibility. And there's nothing more serious. If the, discov the discovery and recognition that humans are not metaphysically unique or separate from our planetary entanglements, if this leads some to conclude that our capacity for self-reflection, sapience, and technical reason is also an illusion and one to be, to be chastened, but they're mistaken. We draw a different conclusion that sapience and technical reason, perspective foresight, and the transformation of habitat into artifact is what planetary entanglement actually is and does. The, planet, the planetary particularity of Earth is not that these coalesce just in our species, but that they are hardly necessary and that they are hardly necessarily exclusive to us, but they are built increasingly into synthetic forms all around us. These are not offensive to, offenses to nature beyond comprehension, in, beyond the, the, uh, the ephemeral and the ineffable, but they are undeniably as often uh, also destructive of the physical conditions of their own possibility. 
And this is our paradox. The emergence of intelligence is destructive of the conditions of its own possibility. What then? Ultimately, the question is not just how to make the evolution of intelligence sustainable on the anthropometric scales of human culture, but finally on the planetary scale of our astronomic uniqueness.